Pro Metal is designed to take load, high loads, high loads. But at that time, this metal is failing. So we went to the hammers. So at the hammers is where they forge the metal. It is the furnaces where metal go through the process of being forged. Amen. So we went, and then I watched. It was my first time to see how they forge metal. So they take it to be a piece of metal like this, and then they put it in a furnace under extreme heat. And then they took um, this clampers. They clamp it. So they take it from the furnace, and they put it on a flat table, a metal table. And then they call one of the guys, release the hammer. They just pull this lever that they pull. And then there's a massive hammer that comes from the, from, from the top. And it is released on that piece of metal. And that piece of metal takes shape, amen, of the shape that it is supposed to be, amen. So when they release this hammer, the hammer is released three times. The first time, the hammer is released, amen, to be in position. And then it goes up. And then they release again, it takes shape. And then they release the hammer for the third time, and then it is sealed in that shape. And then it becomes a part or a tool of metal that is that is forged for a purpose. Amen. Amen. So now I said, yeah, I see what is happening. This is the metal. This is the beginning of this metal that is now processed to become a load-bearing metal. Amen. A load-bearing part. But so what is the problem? Why are we having problems with this metal that is going through this process that we are seeing? Amen. So the conclusion was, because this is load-bearing metal, it has to be in the furnace for a longer time. The hammer should not only be released three times, it has to be released six times, which means the process had to change in order for the metal to perform its duties later on. Amen. So sometimes when you're going through the process of forging, amen, what God does it, what God does is he left us in the furnace for a longer time. So when we are in the furnace for a longer time, we feel like maybe God has neglected me in this, in this furnace. Amen. And sometimes when we are hammered six times, you say, God, how come I'm being hammered and hammered and hammered? But God is hammering you for a purpose. So it is the purpose of forging that God is taking you through. Amen. But sometimes we miss it and we feel like this heat is killing me. But God is saying this heat is building you. Because I'm building you for a purpose. Amen. That's why we say as men, the shoulders are supposed to be broader and stronger. Because there will be so much weight on your shoulders. Sometimes if you're not ready for the weight on your shoulders, the weight will crush you. But God will say, I'm forging you so that when the weight comes, it will not crush you. Because he has already forged you as a man. As a man, what happens sometimes is we go through uh, so much challenges, so much pain, so much difficult times. But men are not like women. Women can talk it out. They can call their mother, their friend, their sister, their f whoever, friend at work, and they can release because they know how to release. They can vent off because women are releases. They always release. They give birth, that's releasing. Amen. They cook, that's releasing. Even at home, they are released to their husband. But the issue with men is men cannot release. Because men cannot vent off. They cannot speak out what is happening to them. So they bottle things in. Amen. And when a man bottles things in, amen, 
usually it ends up distracting them. They have to be in a position where as a man you are able to say, guys, help me. I need help. Amen. To say, guys, listen to me. I need to say to speak up. But usually as men, we hold it inside. But God is saying, I'm structuring a different man. I'm forging a different man. A man who understands things for the kingdom. A man who stands up and say, now it is time for me to release what is inside of me. Amen. A man who stands for what is right. Amen. So now, as I was talking about being forged for a greater calling, being forged for a purpose, being forged for an assignment. So the assignment that God has given each and every one of us requires a different level of forging. It, def- it requires a different level of structuring as God releases you. Amen. So when you are going through the process of being forged, do not think that God is destroying you or God has neglected you. But know that the Lord is with you. Amen. Let's go to the book of Chronicles. Amen. Uh, the first, first Chronicles 11. Amen. First Chronicles 11. Man, we praise his mighty name. We're just going to go to one scripture, one part that I just was on my, on my mind, on my heart uh, the whole week when we, I was going through the, the, um, the message of being forged. Amen. 1 Chronicles 11, uh, I'll read from 22. 1 Chronicles 11, 22. It says, Benaiah was the son of Jehoiada the son of a valiant man from Kabzel, who had done many deeds. He had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. He also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. And he killed an Egyptian, a man of great height, five cubits tall, in the Egyptian hand, there was a spear like a weaver, a beam, and they went down to him with a staff, wrestled the spear out of the Egyptian hand, and killed him with his own spear. Amen. And killed him with his own spear. Amen. So what touched me was the issue or the story of Beniah when I was looking at the as the message of being forged. Ask God, why the story of Benaiah? He said, there is a greater teaching with the story of Benaiah. Because the story of Benaiah shows a man who was forged for a duty. And he was carrying his duty, amen, with so much conviction. Benaiah it's not a big word or big player in the Bible. But God, and but his name has been written for a purpose and for a reason. That will speak to each and every one of us in this room. Amen. So he said, jo- ba- Benaiah was the son of Jehovah, the son of a valiant man from Gaza, who he had done many deeds. He had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. He had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. Amen. A man who was forged for a purpose. Amen. So when we see these two lion-like heroes from Moab, we as men, there are some times when lion-like challenges come to us. And he said two of these men were coming. We do not know which direction we're coming from. Maybe the other one was coming from the front and the other one was coming from the back. Or maybe we're coming simultaneously. Amen. So as men, there are times when we get to a place and a position whereby we see two lion-like challenges coming towards us. And these two lion-like challenges, they are catered or made in a way that they should be destroying us. 
So when we come across those situations or those times, we ask, we'll ask ourselves, God, how can I come out of this situation? How can I come out of this condition? Amen. Because society can come at you, amen, from two different angles as a man. And as a man, your shoulders has got to be strong enough to deal with those challenges that comes your way. So Benaiah is a man, a man who, who was a, was a man of God. He knew that I have God behind me. I have the Holy Spirit behind me. Amen. Every time when you know that you are doing things of God, things to improve or to, things for the kingdom, you should always know that no matter what the condition is, what the challenge is, I stand with God. I stand by the word of God. I stand by his word. Because if I stand by his word, nothing will touch me. So these lion-like heroes of Maya who came over to him, he knew where he was standing. So as men, if we know where our, our foot are planted, where we are rooted, God will be with us in everything that we do. Because I can tell you that I, as a man, as every man here, there are some times when challenges come to us, which are so there that we feel like now this challenge is going to destroy me. Or we get to a place where we feel like, I don't think there's a way out of the situation that I am in. But there's one thing that I just want to remind you as men. That as long as you're standing by his word, as long as you're standing by him, nothing will move you. Nothing will destroy you. So now these men, they came to him. These challenges, they came to him from two different directions. But him knowing that... The power of the living God is, with, is in him. Amen. He knew that he could defeat them. Amen. So the Bible says, he killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. These were not just ordinary men. These were lion-like heroes. Amen. Sometimes we get to a place where we feel like this is too much. Because they were described as lion-like. And they were heroes at the same time. But he had to stand and know who the Lord was to him. Amen. He praised his mighty name. So he stood them. And he managed to kill them. Amen. Because some problems, they only need, they only need one solution. They need to be killed. Because those things, if you do not kill them, they will kill you tomorrow. If you don't deal with them tomorrow, they will be your problem again. So the men, Benaiah, had to kill these two men who were coming towards him. Amen. So those are some of the challenges that we face as men. But as I have, always, as I have said, if we stand by his word... All these challenges will come from different angles. They come from different directions. But if God is with you, they will not touch you. Amen. They will not touch you anyway. Amen. And then he said, he killed two lions like my, oh, heroes of Moab. He also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. Amen. This for me was the part that touched me. It was the part that, that, that moved me. He said he also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. Amen. Amen. This part touched me because this man was going after the worst of the enemies. In the worst of conditions. Everything was stacked against him. The odds were against him. Amen. So sometimes we get to a place whereby the worst of our enemies or the worst of situation or the worst of conditions will be up against us. In the worst of places. Amen. And everything was against him. But knowing that he's a man that stands by the word of God. He said, I will go in that pit. And I will deal with the lion in that slippery condition, in a slowy pace. Amen. Just like our King Jesus. Amen. 
He went down to Hades and he snatched the key out in the worst of conditions. Amen. Sometimes we have to visit the enemy in their territory, in their home ground, and defeat them in their world home ground. Amen. So he said, you went in a snowy place, in a slippery place. I know some of us have been in a slippery place. In a place whereby if you don't step right, you will fall. Or if you don't step right, the enemy, as you fall, the enemy will destroy you in that place. Because they said the man fought lion like men before. But now he's now fighting a lion. Amen. Which means the lion like men was just practice ground. Now he's going out to the lion. Amen. To the real thing. But not only is he just fighting a lion. He is fighting a lion in treacherous conditions. So, I, as I'm saying, as men, there are some treacherous conditions that we operate in. And in that treacherous condition that we are operating in, we have a, an enemy that is so dangerous, that is up against us. That's why we say now, as men, especially in this, um, in this environment, this country, I've seen that men are under fire. The rights of men are being taken every day. Their voice is being taken every day. And their position in society is being taken every day. And every time when the man, the position of a man in the society is taken or is tested, it brings chaos. It brings trouble. That's why the, the, the enemy is always after the man. Because he said the man is the head. Amen. So, so, sometimes, so what the enemy does is he puts in some treacherous conditions in a very dangerous place. But what the enemy did not know was that Benaiah was a man who was forged by God. He was forged by the hand of God. So I'm just encouraging you, each and every one of you in this place. You might go through difficult times, but know that it is God who is forging your hand. It is God who is taking you through the process. Because if you do not go through the process, when the enemy comes, he will destroy you. And the enemy, the enemy, when the enemy comes, he will destroy you. And God does not want you to be destroyed whilst you're carrying his promise. That's why he has to forge you in a way whereby when the time comes, you will not be destroyed with a gift or with a seed inside of you. So the seed in, is, has been placed inside of you. But when the seed has been placed inside of you, it has to go through the process of pruning, cultivation, watering. When the time comes, you'll be able to harvest the seed. Amen. So as a man, if you go, if you feel like the odds are stacked against you, just know that God is with you. Just know that you're going through a process. So the process is not designed to destroy you, but it is designed to sharpen you. It is designed to build you. It is designed to put you in a position that when tomorrow comes, you have the ability to do things that God has called you to do. As we can see the man Benaiah, you will see later in scripture that you will be the man who will pave way for Solomon to be king. Amen. So all this was practice ground for the real thing that he was coming to do later on. So sometimes when you go through difficult times, just know that you are going through a training ground. And in that training ground, God is not training you to destroy you. But he is training you to stand tomorrow when trials come. Because I can tell you that trials will come, especially if you are a man or a woman of God. And God does not, want see to, does not want to see you being destroyed with the seed, pregnant with the seed. That's why he's training you today so that tomorrow you will be a man that stands when trials come. Amen. Amen. So Benaiah is a man who is forged for, for purpose. He is a man who is built for a reason. 
He is a man who is structured to do things of God. So I pray and I say in this place, be men who are structured for things of God. Be men who are built for the purposes of God. Be men who are forged to stand when hard things come, when difficulties come. Be men who are able to stand. Because as Christians, we are in a position whereby every day we are being tested. Every day we are being pushed around. Every day our rights are being tested. But as men who are forged for the kingdom, who will be men that will stand? It does not matter what the enemy is saying, what the enemy is doing. We will stand for what we believe in. We will stand for what is right. We will stand for what our Christ died for. We will stand for our children. We will stand for this generation. We will stand for generations to come. We will stand for the advancement of this kingdom. Because it takes you and me to stand up and say we are going to stand for what is right. Amen. For this nation, for this world, for you, for your family. Because if we do not stand, no one else will stand. But it takes you and me to stand for what is right. And then the Bible says, and he killed an Egyptian man of great height. Five cubes tall, in the Egyptian hand, there was a spear like a weaver's bin. And he went down to him with a staff, wrestled the spear out of the Egyptian hand, and killed him with his own spear. Amen. Amen. This man was a great man. He, he wrestled Egyptian king, the Egyptian champion. And took the spear out of his hand. And he killed him with his own spear. So men of God. It is time for us. To go down. To the Egyptian, to the Egyptian champion. And wrestle the spear out of his hand. Because if we do not wrestle the spear out of his hand. That spear will be the end of us. But we have to wrestle it. The tool that the enemy is using. To destroy us, we have to wrestle it out of the hands of the enemy and use it to destroy the enemy. And the enemy has so many tools in his hands. As we all know that, there are so many platforms that the enemy is operating from. We have to wrestle and take it out of the enemy's hands and use it to destroy him. Amen. He said, and he killed an Egyptian man of great height, five cubits tall. In the Egyptian hand, there was a spear like a weaver's beam. And he went down to him with a staff, wrestled the spear out of the Egyptian hand, and killed him with his own spear. Amen. There will be challenges. But it is important that we stand by the word of God. And our feet are rooted in the word of God. And we will not fear what the enemy say, does, amen, or threaten us with. But we stand as men. And we know why the Lord has called us. And we will fulfill that purpose. Amen. Praise his mighty name. We give glory to his mighty name. Amen. Amen.